Fox News alert and it's good news. Al Qaeda's top terrorist, Ayman Zawahiri, taken out by a U.S. drone while standing on the balcony of a safe house in Afghanistan. Once known as bin Laden's right hand man, he helped mastermind the 9 11 attacks and led Al Qaeda after bin Laden's death. Joining us now from the White House National Security Council coordinator, Admiral John Kirby. Uh, Admiral, great to see you. Thanks so much for making time for us tonight. Uh, of course. What could you tell us about this operation? Well, I'll tell you, this uh, really shaped up over uh, the last uh, six, seven months, uh, Brian, when we first had indications that. Uh, Mr. Zawahiri uh, was going to move or in the process of going to Kabul. Uh, we know he was trying to reunite with family members, family members that we had tracked to Kabul, so we were able to then follow his movements. Then it became a matter of sort of developing that intelligence, making sure that it in fact was him, A, B, uh, that we right. had a pattern of life that we could watch that might give us an opportunity. Uh, the president was very clear once he made the decision uh, that he wanted to minimize any risk of civilian casualties. So that put, uh, you know, uh, an additional uh, demand on uh, the intelligence and counterterrorism right. uh, community to make sure we could do this in a way which only got him and nobody else. Admiral, uh, no one has to tell you that in the Doha agreement, the Taliban uh, pledged not to have an alliance with Al Qaeda. They was, he was staying in an Al Qaeda owned Haqqani house, who's in the Taliban government. Yeah. He was sitting there in Kabul. Usually, Taliban leaders don't work alone. Obviously, this is a violation. Where's the rest of the Al Qaeda guys located right now? Well, you're right, Brian, and we do believe this is, a, we hold this as a violation of the Doha Agreement. We made that very clear. I think the fact that we were able to take out Mr. Zawahiri in downtown Kabul without a scratch to anybody else sends a pretty powerful signal to the Taliban and anybody else who might harbor uh, al-Qaeda terrorists going forward. Um, we have talked about, and, and Brian, you remember this uh, over a year ago, we talked about the fact that we knew even before we left Afghanistan that there was going to be a small number of al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. They already were there. Um, I, we still believe the number is, is very small, but that they're there. Um, and again, I think if I was uh, a member of Al Qaeda, I I'd be uh, I'd be thinking again about right. how safe a haven Afghanistan might be for me right now. Uh, Admiral, they're in 15 provinces according to the United Nations, not known as a very political organization. Uh, but I do think that one would believe if the leader of the Taliban is not in a excuse me, the leader of Al Qaeda is not in a cave or hiding out in the mountains of Pakistan, that he's on the balcony in the capital that Al Qaeda feels pretty good about their presence in that country and there's more than just one guy but that's not good news for us but the good news is uh, he's I would, dead I, I would actually I'd actually throw that back a little bit Brian I don't think they're feeling too good about being in Afghanistan right now really if they were worried about it they'd be in the uh, they'd be hiding in Pakistan where we I couldn't even find them I don't I mean I I don't think that Al Qaeda can look at what happened over the last 48 hours and feel like Afghanistan is going to be much of a safe haven for them. We have proven that over the horizon counterterrorism capability works. Right. We did it to a fairly well in the last 48 hours and we're going to stand by and be ready and vigilant if we have to do it again. Uh, Admiral, we understand in a matter of hours, it looks as though the Speaker of the House, according to the Wall Street Journal and other sources, will be landing in Taipei in Taiwan. Do you believe uh, that goes against what's in the best interest of our country? Uh, we've said uh, long, long ago, I mean, that, uh, that nothing's changed about our one China policy, nothing's changed about our support to Taiwan and, and, and their self defense. Um, and the Speaker uh, has a right to travel. She is the Speaker of the House. She is a member of Congress. Members of Congress of both parties, as you know, have traveled to Taiwan even just this year. Now, it's an independent branch of government. We gave her advice and counsel. We gave her context and information. Obviously, uh, as is typical, we are helping with her transportation. Uh, but this is a decision that only she can make, uh, and we support and respect that decision. You do, but you said it was the Pentagon recommended against it, according to the President. Thomas Friedman writes in today's Wall Street, uh, excuse me, New York Times, says, don't go, Nancy. This is reckless. China's helped us against Russia by not even giving Russia a drone or a weapon, and this jeopardizes that. Is he right? I think that you have to keep this in a bit of broader perspective, Brian. I mean, the, the, the aggressiveness, the coercion, the increase in tensions in the last weeks and months have all come from the Chinese side. What we have said right. is that there's no reason that this visit should escalate tensions in any way whatsoever. It is consistent with uh, Admiral, uh, previous but, but American you and policy I, But you past. and I, of course, you're making total sense, but <laughs> it's not making sense in China. And for some reason, they look at that as weakness. And if she was not to land, and if she does land, they looked as provocative. But in the big picture, should we not be arming 
Taiwan to defend itself after not doing that to Ukraine? Should oh, we right. be giving them the weapons necessary to fend off a, a Chinese attack? What is taking so long? Oh, Brian, I mean, come on. We have been uh, helping Taiwan self-defense now for decades in a bipartisan way. The Taiwan Relations Act requires us to uh, help support Taiwan self-defense. Do we have enough there? Admiral, we... you're a military expert as well as being a great spokesperson. <laughs> Do we have enough there to defend, to make it a porcupine, make it impossible for China to attack that, that island nation of 23 million people? We have worked very hard to make sure that Taiwan can defend itself, and we're going to continue to do that going forward. I'm not going to talk about intelligence matters or, or hypothetical situations. I can tell you that we, are, we remain committed to making sure that Taiwan can, uh, can look after its self-defense in a very capable, very effective way. Why do we not do war games with Taiwan? Because if we are going to play a role, a support role or, or a direct role to save them, why do we not do war games with them, even in computer fashion, let alone actual do what we do with South Korea to prevent, for hypothetically, a North Korean attack? Why do we not do that? Again, Brian, we support their uh, ability to, to, to self-defend, to defend themselves. That's what we're focused on. Uh, as you heard the president say, nothing's changed about one China policy, uh, and we don't support Taiwan independence, but we do support our obligations under the Taiwan Relations Act to help them defend themselves, and we're committed to that. Committed to that, but we're going to have to wing it if we have to actually get involved with it. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not about winging it. Not at all. I mean, again, the, the, the support that we give to t Taiwan is very deliberate. It's very comprehensive. Uh, you'll see that continue uh, going forward. I'm, I'm confident of that. Uh, but this is not about winging it. This is about making sure uh, that we're giving them, providing them uh, the kinds of tools and capabilities uh, that they need to defend themselves. All right. Um, when, we, when it comes to Iran, it looks as though they have, don't have much of an interest in taking us up on a, a ridiculously generous offer to get back into a nuclear agreement that's about to expire in a few years. But they declare that they can use nuclear missiles to turn New York into hellish ruins. What is our response to that? I, I, our response is a couple of things. Number one, uh, we do urge them to take the deal that's on the table. You're absolutely right, Brian. The negotiations uh, are ba basically complete. It's a good deal. They ought to take that deal. Uh, number two, the president's been very clear that uh, whether they take it or not, uh, we're not going to turn a blind eye to the threats that they represent in the region. We, as you know, we were just out in the region meeting with the Saudis and other Gulf leaders right. uh, about the threat posed by Iran. We have a, a robust military capability in the region, and, and it's capable, and we are working now with regional partners on a potential for an integrated air and missile defense to deal with exactly that sort of threat. Um, just back to China uh, for a second. I know you yeah. guys did a study on how many uh, interdictions that they've had on air and in sea, and the number is off the charts of great concern to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Yeah. When the president meets for over uh, for uh, over an hour, between an hour and two hours with President Xi, knowing that they're doing everything, including trying to infiltrate our Fed, when are we going to admit that they're an adversary and start taking the gloves off with them and start doing a massive move to pull our manufacturing out of there and alert business that it's not okay to do business there? I think the, the president was very clear with President Xi uh, uh, about the, the issues where we, we face challenges with China. Uh, you, you saw and we're hoping that the Congress will finally pass this CHIPS Act that will allow the United States to become a leader in the manufacture of microchips and try to surpass uh, the impact that China's having on that global economy. We're also, of course, revitalizing our alliances in the region. The first trip uh, that Secretary Austin took as secretary was to Japan and South Korea. The president was there not long ago. Uh, it's important that we continue to make sure from a security perspective that we have robust capabilities in that part of the region. The, pre the Pentagon, place I just left, uh, has talked about China being the pacing challenge for the Department of Defense. And if you look at the budget, Brian, that we submitted to Congress, uh, you'll see that we are really trying to invest now billions of dollars in the kinds of capabilities like hypersonics mm. that will get at the, the, the threat that, that China poses in the region. So we're very focused on this. Right. And Amram, my last question to you, it's been about a year since we pulled out of Afghanistan. In your estimation, is that the worst military disaster in your lifetime? No, I would not say that at all. Uh, I, I think we need to take a look this month 
Um, and remember, yes, of course, the lives uh, that were lost, not only during the evacuation, but over the 20 years of war. Um, and, and I had a friend that, that, uh, that I lost there, too. So, I mean, this is personal for me. But I also think it's an opportunity to look uh, at the lives we saved, Brian. 124,000 uh, Afghans brought out of that country in the course of two weeks. Never been done in military history. Nothing like it at yeah. all. Completely unprecedented. But also, um, the stronger strategic footing that we are right. on now because that war is over. Right, you know that flashing, that that noise. That's meaning your time's up with me, and it also <laughs> means there's a big vehicle backing up near you. Uh, Admiral, I think so. Uh, thanks so much for the quality time. Appreciate it. You bet, Brian. Anytime. Hi, right. everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.